Okay, so we've seen many, many examples of how you can take data in one table or one table and then uh, convert it, convert it or tidy it up or do something with it. Okay, now very often what's going to happen is that the data of interest is actually going to be spread across multiple uh, data tables or multiple data frames or multiple files. Okay, and uh, often we'll have to perform analysis with all of the data together. Of course, we're not going to combine all of that data into one single data frame and perform our analysis, but for different kinds of analysis, we may want to combine together information from multiple data frames. Okay, so that's what we're going to see now. Now, without uh, special support for that, it can get really complicated, uh, but what we're going to see now is a set of features a uh, set of functions that make all of that processing uh, relatively straightforward and easy. Okay, now this kind of data is what is called relational data. Now, those of you who were in my uh, class on uh, uh, business information modeling or enterprise accounting information systems one, uh, which was uh, BITM 3724 or BACC 4101. Uh, so, if you have been in that class, you have already encountered some of the concepts that we are going to talk about. Of course, in that course, we looked at things from a different perspective. Uh, here, we look at it slightly differently, but the ideas are, underlying ideas are pretty similar. Okay, so, uh, I, we'll, we'll see how, how it goes. Okay, so we are going to load Tidyverse, and you already know about this package called NYC Flights 13, which consists of all the flights that originated from any of the three New, New York airports which is uh, LaGuardia, JFK, or Newark, and uh, all the flight information for, uh, for flights that went in 2013 from New York uh, only, right? We're not talking about flights coming into New York City, only flights going out of New York City. So we've already seen this particular uh, data frame, uh, which is the flights data frame from this, right? From this, we had information about flights, but it turns out that that particular package has information about many other things as well. So flights was the one single table that we looked at. We got information about every single flight, right? Now, within the flight, for example, you had information about what was the origin airport, what was the destination airport, and what was the tail number of the aircraft that was used in that particular flight and so on. It turns out that information about these specific things are available in separate tables within the same package. So for example, there is a table called airlines, and this contains information about all of the airlines whose flights we are looking at. So, for example, this will have information about uh, United Airlines, American Airlines, US Airways, JetBlue, and so on and so on. Okay, so for each airline, it will have information about, you know, what is the what is the code for that airline, the FAA code for the airline, uh, and so on, and what's the name of the airline and other information. Then similarly, there is also information about airports, uh, lots of airports, obviously. Uh, and of course, for every flight, you have information about what is the origin airport, what is the destination airport. In this particular table, you're going to find more information about the airports themselves, which is uh, what is the name of the airport, what is the code for the airport, what is the latitude, what is the longitude, and stuff like that. Okay, so you have that information. And then, of course, we already know that in the flights table, you have information about the uh, information about the particular aircraft that was used in that flight. And the particular aircraft used in a flight is identified by its tail number. Okay, that is what is a unique identifier for an aircraft, just like a wind number for a car. There's a tail number for every single plane that is used. And within the flights table, uh, flights table or table, you have information for every flight about which specific aircraft was actually used. In this table, planes you have more information about each of those aircraft. So for example, you have the tail number, then you have what kind of inf what kind of aircraft it is, how many engines, uh, uh, where, which is the year in which it was manufactured, all of that stuff, okay? Uh, and then you also have, of course, weather information for every single day of the year and by hour, right? So for every hour, what was the weather? So you have that, and weather information would be things like, you know, uh, weather at the origin airport. Right, so one of the three airports, what was the weather at the origin airport, not any other airports. Uh, so you have information hourly for each of those three airports, uh, information about, you know, what was the temperature, what was the wind like, uh, whether there was rain, all of that stuff. 
Okay, so broadly speaking, we can represent that information like this. And here you see the, the tibbles which are there. So for example, you have the tibble called airports, right? And for every uh, <coughs> uh, tibble, we are not showing all the columns, but it's showing the important columns. So for example, within the airports tibble, there is a column called FAA, right? And that column represents the typical uh, three character code that we use for every airport. So for example, when we have Newark, we say EWR. Uh, for JFK, we say JFK. For LaGuardia, we say LGA and so on and so on. So that information is what <coughs> you have in this particular column. And of course, as I already mentioned, the other columns contain information about other attributes of the airport. For example, the latitude, longitude, etc, etc. Okay. So then you ha here you have the flights uh, table and we already know that e it has a year month, day, hour, right? That is uh, uh, this information about uh, the the uh, hour talks about the departure uh, time, the scheduled departure time for that particular flight. Then flight itself talks about the, the flight number and then the origin airport, destination airport, uh, the tail number of the aircraft that was used and the carrier. And of course, it has a lot of other information like uh, scheduled departure time, actual departure time, scheduled arrival time, actual arrival time, arrival delay. And, and other kinds of fields which are there, which are not shown here. So the only fields which are shown here are those that have connections with other tables. So for example, uh, the FAA or the airport code is the field that appears in both the origin and the destination in the flights table, right? So in the flights table, you have a column called origin, you have a column called destination, and that basically has the airport code for the origin airport and destination airport. So for example, if you had a flight going from, let's say, Newark to uh, San Francisco, origin would say EWR and uh, destination would say SFO. To find further details about the origin and destination airports, we can go here and find out, okay, let's look at the details for the uh, SFO airport and for the EWR airport. You'll get the further details here, right? So you can see that uh, you've got multiple tables and they're all connected by values in specific fields, okay? Now, uh, for those who were in my uh, 3724 uh, database class, you know that we are talking about primary keys and foreign keys about the connections. Okay, so that's what it is. Uh, so you've got the airlines, of course, the flights uh, table contains information for each flight. You know who the carrier was. Was it United Airlines, American Airways, United Airlines uh, or um, US Airways or JetBlue, whatever it is, uh, Alaska Airlines, etc. And of course, further information. So here you only have the code. So for example, for a flight that took off from EWR, uh, uh, you know, and was operated by, let's say, uh, United, uh, you'll just have, uh, you know, the EWR will be the origin, a destination will be whatever it is, and the carrier will simply say UA for United Airlines. Okay. Further details about that would be available in the airlines table. You go look at the UA row, and you'll see other information here. Okay, it will give you the actual uh, name of the airport and then other details as well. Okay, so then you have the planes information. Once again, you have uh, the, the main identifying information here is the tail number, which is like a VIN number for a plane. So for every flight, you have the tail number of the plane that was used for that particular flight. So here you will just have the tail number. For other details about that plane, we can find that information here. Okay, so that's what is going on here. And then finally, there is also a connection to the weather, uh, which is the weather that was recorded uh, at, at each hour at, the, at this origin. When they say origin, they're talking about an airport code, right? So they shouldn't have used the word origin here, really. They should have used uh, uh, FAA, perhaps, to indicate that this is about the airport code. But anyway, they've said origin. So what this is telling you is, at this particular airport, for example, EWR, on this year, this month, this day, at this hour, what was the weather? And the information about the weather is all here. Now, to find information about any of these things, you can go into our studio. Of course, assuming you have loaded the uh, the package NYC flights 13, right? You can type in question mark planes, right? No space between the question mark and planes. So just say question mark planes. You'll get a description of that particular table, or question mark airports, or question mark flights, or question mark weather or question mark guidelines, right? So that way you'll be able to get information about each of these things, okay? Now, one more point here that is indicated is the fact that you notice the notation, 
So you've got a connection from FAA to origin, which means that uh, every origin, uh, every flight has an origin. So for example, if we took off from uh, e uh, Newark Airport, the origin would say EWR, right? We know that uh, many flights take off from EWR, right? So for example, if your flights table, as we already know, the flights table has 330,000 rows, many of them would have origin as EWR, okay? But within the airport's table, there would be only one EWR, right? Because that contains the master information about the various airports, right? So that will have the uh, FAA as EWR, and then we have other information uh, about that particular airport. If the latitude, longitude are two important pieces that I have already said, and other kinds of information, right? So it says that this FAA is the primary key in the airport's table. In other words, for uh, if for every value of FA, there would be only one row here, right? So, for example, EWR will have only one row because it's the primary key. This is the one that is describing all the airports. So, there's no sense in having information about one airport two or three times, okay? So, there would be only one row for EWR, one row for JFK, and one row for any other airport that you can think of, okay? So, in that sense, this particular column FAA in this particular table it's called as the primary key in the sense that its values would be unique in the table. Uh, that you won't find any duplicated values of this particular column in this table. Okay, so that's what the primary key means. Whereas here, it appears, meaning the value of FA would appear in the, in the origin uh, field, but that won't be unique because many flights take off from that particular location, right? And that is how it's no, no, denoted here, right? So where you see this small a semicircle, that place is where it's the primary key and uh, the place where you see the arrow, that's where it is what is called as a foreign key and the value could repeat. Okay, so that's what it's showing here. Uh, uh, notice the similarly airlines, obviously, for every every airline, uh, you're going to have only one, uh, you know, the United Airlines, for example, is going to appear only once in this table and then you're going to have all other fields. Similarly, for a specific tail number, particular aircraft is going to appear only once here, but it will appear many times in this because a particular aircraft may be operated on many flights, a particular airline obviously is going to operate many flights and so on. Okay. Uh, now the situation with weather is a little bit different because in all of these prior cases that we spoke about, the primary key was just a single field, right? a single column was the primary key. With weather, uh, the primary key is made up of many columns right? because for one year, you have, you're going to have many days and many hours, right? Uh, so the combination here is uh, the origin of the airport where the weather was measured and the, uh, the specific hour at which the weather was measured, right? So for a particular airport, for a particular hour, which would, let's say, 9 a.m. on, uh, you know, January 1st or February 2nd, so 9 a.m. February 2nd, 2013. So here is 2013, month is 2 February. The day is uh, 2, let's say February 2nd. The hour is uh, 9 a.m., which is uh, 9, okay? And the origin, let's say, is the Newark Airport EWR, right? So for, for all of the combination, there would be only one row, right? But if you consider just the EWR airport alone, you're going to have many rows because the weather at that airport was measured many, many times for different values of these other things, okay? Similarly, uh, you're going to have many, many values of month, right? Because, uh, uh, or even month-day combination. For February 2nd, you're going to have uh, measurements for many hours for one airport and also for all other airports, right? So what is unique here is the combination of all of these, okay? So therefore, the primary key in this particular table is the combination of all of those fields. That's, that's what is important. Of course, there are other fields here, like I already said, uh, you know, how much was the rainfall, what was the temperature, what was the air pressure, all of that information is here, right? But what is unique here is this combination, and for this particular combination, uh, you've got a lot of different descriptors. Just like here, the FAA is going to be unique, okay? That is, the same value of FAA will not occur more than once, and for a particular value of FAA, you have other attributes which describe it. Similarly, for a particular value of the combination of all of these, you're going to have other descriptors.
Okay, so the combination that is supposed to be unique in a table, that is what is called as the primary key, right? And again, you see that the primary key is on the weather side because you see these semicircles here and the arrows are all here uh, to indicate that this is multiple, okay? Again, here you see that uh, the, the primary key of flights is this, year, month, day, hour, and flight, right? Flight number. That's what is the primary key for flights. Uh, and uh, the, the the two tables have these fields in common, right? So if you want to find, let's say, what was the weather corresponding to a particular flight, right? Of course, here the, when we say hour, we are talking about its scheduled departure hour, not the actual departure time. So the scheduled departure hour at that time for a particular flight, what was the weather? You will find it by taking this entire combination, year, month, day, hour, flight, and origin, and finding the corresponding value in this particular uh, table or table, right? You go there and find out, let's say the year is 2013. Let's say the month is February, the day is two, uh, the hour is, let's say, 9 a.m. And the origin, let's say, is EWR, right? So you look at all of those things, go into this table, find out for that particular combination what the weather was, okay? So that is what uh, it is. So. So if you want to combine flights with weather, you will join it on those particular fields. If you want to find, uh, uh, for flights, if you want to find more details about the airport than just the airport code, then you combine it with the airports table on the, this particular field and so on. Okay, now one thing that you see here is that sometimes the field names are the same. So for example, the identification uh, number for a particular aircraft is called tail num in the flights table and it's also called tail num in the planes table okay similarly the airline is called carrier in the flights table it's also called carrier in the airlines table okay on the other hand FAA for an airport the airport code is called FAA in the airports table but it could be called origin or destination in the flights table okay uh, so what we are pointing out here is uh, the fields which are common to multiple tables may have the same name in the multiple tables. They may also have different names in the different tables. Okay, so we have to be aware of the meaning before we start using it, right? So for example, when they say origin in the weather table, right, really they are talking about the, the place where the uh, weather was measured. In other words, it's really an airport code where the weather was measured. Really, they shouldn't be using origin here because origin is referring to, uh, you know, for a flight, it takes off from a particular place. But anyway, that's the term they have used and we have to go with that.